Butters, are you done? Tension war. Good morning, Stitchers. It is Sunday, August 12th, and I am recording a floss tube update. I've got a lot done in the past couple weeks, so I'm excited to, uh, to show you what I've been working on. Um, my family left yesterday around 10.30 a.m., and it is about 9 o'clock, 9.15 it looks like right now, and it's been great. I could use another couple days. Um, I absolutely wasted all of my time yesterday. I started out well right after they left. I jumped in the shower, um, got some errands done early in the morning. I uh, recorded a Stitchy Box unboxing and got that quickly edited and uploaded. I went and got some dinner and then I promptly took a two hour nap. And so I woke up at like 7.30 at night feeling like crap, as you do when you take long nap, and I never recovered. So I basically just laid on the couch. I watched a Dateline show on the guy with the two women and the owl <laughs> and the staircase which I had heard of, but never really, really got into. So I watched that for two hours and I don't sit and watch TV very often. So that was something. And then I decided at that time it was like 1130 and I felt kind of tired again. So I'm like, I'm going to go lay in bed. And then I just laid in bed till like 1am and I slept horribly. So I thought, okay, I'm going to get up this morning. The kids won't be home until this afternoon with my husband. I'm going to record this video and maybe I'll just stitch for a while. And I've got my coffee because I need it. Like my eyes hurt. You know what I mean? You know how that is? Oh, it's terrible. I can't get my eyes to not hurt. I just took a Claritin because I was thinking maybe, maybe it's allergies, but I don't know. Mmm. So let's get started. Looks like I left my notes all the way across the room, so we're just going to wing it because I'm not getting up to go get them. Um, so this is usually I try to do things in, you know, orders of finishes and, and whips and new starts, but I'm doing it in chronological order. So sometime mid-July, uh, I started Cop and Buzz. And that is a freebie from Plum Street Samplers, and I will link it either below or on my blog. Um, this was Tracy P's 2018 birthday stitch along, and I finished it. I finished it right at the end of July. If I had my notes, I could tell you when, but I don't, so I can't. It doesn't matter anyway. It was the end of July. So let me show you that. I love this. Oh, I love it. So this is a freebie from Plum Street Samplers. I think I said that. You can find it on Paulette's blog. Um, I recharted the 2018 and I did mine on 32 count, 32 count stone gray linen from Zweigart. And I used the Gentle Art Brick Path. This took 10 yards of brick path. Just so you know, 10 yards of floss on 32 count, two over two. Don't you love it? I do, look at the variegation. <gasps> oh! So I can't wait to finish this never, because that's how that works, right? I have these ideas of um, my kitchen. So my kitchen and my bathroom are the two rooms that in the nine years that we've lived here, I haven't touched. I haven't touched the bathroom at all and it's like this ugly corally pink color and the bathroom or the kitchen is close to the same color and it had this mint green and coral wallpaper on one of the walls and above the cabinets. You know what I mean? Um, and so above the cabinets it's still there but I tried to take it off the wall 
but the glue is all still there and I just can't like I just I'm over it and so I was watching uh, Chelsea's um, nursery tour and how they put shiplap up and I was like that's what I'm doing in the kitchen I am putting shiplap over that glue I'm doing it and I told my husband I want shiplap and he's like I don't know what shiplap is anyway this all comes back to this so I want to do like a gray wash shiplap because we have new I guess I shouldn't say we've never touched the kitchen because we have new flooring in there new just linoleum and it's like a gray color and I wanted to do the walls in like a yellow and gray like the walls yellow and then doesn't matter anyway I want to use a gray shiplap stuff and then I would like to hang coffee pieces in the kitchen so that'll probably happen never as well because it's been nine years and I haven't done it but god I, I hate my kitchen and the whole thing needs to be painted because it's a coral color with Aztec wallpaper with one wall of it ripped off and it's all glue like how do people live like this let me tell you I do because I'd rather stitch so anyway um, yeah coffin buzz all done and I still have more fabric to do something else on I guess I should probably at least trim that so I can free up that fabric okay so then when I finished that I was on Instagram I don't know the next night and I realized it was Jessie Marie's um, stitch along her Jessie Marie turns five stitch along for her floss tube channel and I was like yeah I wanted to participate in that so I'm glad somebody posted so that was I think July 29th but again doesn't matter because it's already passed so I went to my whips and I have really been concentrating on like the select portion of projects to get done this year for Whipocalypse and I threw that to the wind and I was like let me just dig into my uh, whips because because they need love so the first one I chose was um, the Jardine Privé the way to happiness and I had finished part one like last February, I think, for the freebie February stitch along. And I never picked it up again. So here we go. I got very little done on this. By the time I realized what day it was, I think that's what it was. It was later in the day. Um, I didn't have much stitching time. And then the fabric that I'm stitching this on wasn't working with the DMC conversion because I'm using the DMC conversion, not Nina's threads that they're charted for. And I was really mad and I was like, geez, oh, Pete's, you know, I don't have it in me to refigure stuff, but I did. So I only got this done, that one word heart, and it was a light gray and I had stitched it all and it just got lost on this fabric. So I knew that um, I wanted to use a purple. I just had decided that kind of because of the fabric, like a dusty purple. So I just opened up my DMC box and looked around <laughs> until I found something I liked. And it ended up with a DMC 3740, which is dusty purple. So that's it. That's where I am. That's the whole thing. I did the one word and then I was like, yeah, I'm finished. So this is on a piece of 28, I bet you. It's 28 count linen from Fabrics by LJ. Um, I think it's called Peanut Butter and Jelly this point so old I don't remember so I did enjoy once I figured out the color I liked it but then it was just too late to work on it anymore so back away it went that was my J and then the next day was M so I chose M for uh, mother's arms by Mirabilia in hindsight, I wish I would have chosen a different mirror to work on because I'm not enjoying this. <laughs> I'm not enjoying this. 
Um, but I made some changes and I think that that's going to help. And I will talk about that. Whoa. So this is what it looks like. Mother's Arms, Mirabilia Designs. It's, uh, it's out of print now. I want to say it's like number 11 or 14 or something. Number 11 from 1995. So I got my copy on eBay though for like 25 bucks. So it wasn't too bad. Um, it's gorgeous. It's an almost full coverage. So you really got to be committed and I'm not sure I have that type of commitment in me. But I worked on it. So I started in the upper right hand corner. No, I started in the upper left hand corner. And this is where I got. So I filled in, I just worked down here and filled this in. So up in that corner, you can see in the very tippy top of that corner is acrinic, I think number, well, I can tell you, acrinic number eight braid. And then in this little doodad here, there is blending filament. So in this chart, it calls for you to stitch um, um, this with blending filament, and this is one of them, this is one of them, with three strands, three strands of blending filament. Are you kidding me? You know, to channel my inner, inner Danielle, are you kidding me right now? No, nope, whole lot of nope on that. So I um, sent a message to Garrett because he's just sometimes my go-to. And I was like, hey. Oh, first I sent a message to Lucretia because she is stitching this with me. We started this for Mania 2016, was it? Um, and she waited for me, yes, because that was the year that I sliced my thumb on the mandolin. That was a good time. So she waited for me until I was able to stitch and we started this together for Mania. And it was gonna be a Mother's Day start, but it was the next weekend because finger. So thank you, I love you, you're such a good friend. So I first uh, sent her a message and I was like, hey, are you using this blending filament? Cause I think this is BS. And she's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I am. I kidded it all up, you know, a while ago with the called for stuff. I'm like, eh. So I said, I think that I want to use uh, Petite Treasure Braid. And she was like, oh, okay. You know, so then I sent Garrett a message and I was like, hey, what would you do? And he said, I would probably swap them out because the petite treasure braid is three stranded or three ply, not three stranded because you don't pull it apart. So I hopped on one, two, three stitch and I'm sure, oh, and I did buy something else to go with this because you know, nothing can travel alone. And I pulled out, I, I looked up online, um, acrinic to petite treasure braid conversion because I can Google like I can do hard things so I looked it up and found a couple there were two choices for the pink which is this high luster 007 blending filament and one choice for the look matches and one choice for this so I got three cards of Petite Treasure Braid. I've never used this stuff. I own some, but I've never used it. It's really blowing out. So, yeah. So, I'm not using these because that's stupid. But I am going to use one of these. And I think this is more dusty, so I'm pretty sure I'm going with these. But by the time I had made that choice, I was, you know, like done with this piece. It's like, F it. <laughs> I don't want to work on this anymore. Um, yep. Oops. Wrong thing. So, so that's where I ended up. Just this little corner. I'll pick it back up again eventually. I really wish I had chosen, after I started working on this, I, I was like, oh, I really wish I would have chosen like Tree of Hope because I really enjoy that mirror. And then I'm so close on Gwen with the uh, Bewitching Pixies. I'm not that close, but I mean, there's a lot of progress on her. And I really would like to maybe get her done. I think I'm working on the last color in her dress. And then I just have to do all the fence work stuff. Why am I not working on that? 
I don't know because I'm working on other stuff. I'll just answer that. So that was it. Oh, and I'm stitching that on a 32 count just white linen from which I'll, you know, that's like screen. Okay, so that was M, J, M, D. So D, the next day I pulled out Art Deco Fox by Doreen Jones. And see if I can find a better picture than just showing you the pattern. There we go. Oh my gosh, Trisha, let's get it together. So there is our Deco Fox. Um, the only one that I've seen complete, I think I've seen this a couple times, but for sure, Crystal from Fiber Artsy finished this on a piece of like oatmeal Ada like this, and it's so cute. So I started this for. I also believe 2016 Stitch Mania. Oh, this is from the World of Cross Stitch, number 229, in case you want to find that for yourself. I am stitching mine on a piece of navy blue 14 count Ada. I don't know why, because it was in my stash. Why not stitch on the Ada? And it's really stiff too. I don't know where it came from. But this is where I got, which is pretty far. I really had a lot of fun adding in all these colors. And I think all that's left here is like a white color and back stitch. So that was a lot of fun. I got his ears. Um, when it started, when I started, I had only had like this line done. That was all I got. Look at that. Some cat here. So it's going to be really cute when I get it done someday. I stayed up late working on that too because I think I just got a really late start stitching that day. Then for S, for stuff, Jesse Marie does stuff, I pulled out my Scandinavian sampler from Oh, well, where is it from? Oh, goodness sakes. The guy that does the samplers, the Nordic samplers, you all know it. Shout out his name. Is it Nordic something? I don't know. I'll put it in a little thing below. Jakob is his name. Oh, you all know him. Anyway, um, this is where I got to. So this is on a 28 count Jobelin from Witch Elt, just white. And I am using this hank of silk from, is it Silks For You or is it Dinky Dyes? We're gonna find out because I left the receipt in here. Silks For You. Uh, and this is PR034 is the color. So it's just this beautiful dark red. So I finished some of the rounds and started this snowflake. And I will try to link the pattern below. And here's a little side note, and maybe you're noticing it because maybe I've already started doing the editing. Um, but I, uh, story time. So I had my brother-in-law look at my laptop that I do all my editing on because it's been slowing down like quite a bit. Because it's, it's not old, I don't think. It might be five years old. You know, laptops get old quick. Anyway, it was really slow and it was taking like a full five minutes to boot up. So he installed an SS... ID, SSDI card, I can't remember what it's called, whatever it is, I bought it on Amazon, sent it to his house, and he installed it, but of course that meant a lot of my stuff got wiped off my computer, like he updated my windows, and I lost some programs, and I had backed up all my documents, but now everything's trying to save to OneDrive, and it's full, it's a hot mess, my computer, but anyway, the biggest thing is that I was, uh, eyelash in my eye. Um, my Windows Movie Maker that I edit my videos on was gone. Oops! 
And apparently the version that I have, they don't have anymore. It's different, so I had to download a different one and I have Windows 10 and it's the stupid app store and I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. So I downloaded the Windows 10 free version and I was editing my Stitchy Box uh, video yesterday and it wasn't doing all of the things that I'm used to and nothing looks the same and I'm really irritated by it. So I had to buy the full version of it. And I don't remember why I started this conversation. Oh, I know, editing. So, um, but when I was playing around with it and I was trying to insert pictures, it does the overlay picture. So like maybe I'll put pictures of things up in this corner. I don't know, we'll see. It's gonna take my editing to a whole new level. Like it was 10 bucks well worth it, but I was really chapped that that was gone. Like, my computer works differently now, but at least things open in timely fashion. There's that. So, thank you, Eric, if you ever watch this, for fixing my computer. I'm sorry I'm bitching about it. I hate change. Okay. Anyway, so, stuff for Scandinavian Sampler by whoever that designer is. It still hasn't come back to me. Oh, that irritates me. Okay, so the next day was um, her turns five day, and it was a free day, I think. So you know what's been calling to me? Bird Lady. So I pulled out Bird Lady. I didn't bring the regular chart, I don't think. Maybe I did. Maybe it's in here. Hold on. Probably not, though. Nope. So I pulled out uh, the Bird Keeper from The Good Huswife. Oh, and at this time also Stitch What's started. So Stitch What's is um, a challenge in the Cross Stitch It's Fun Facebook group, which I haven't belonged to for a super long time, but anything Harry Potter intrigues me. So I watch uh, Wonderfully Hopeless on YouTube Charity. I watched one of her videos and saw that she was starting Stitch Whats and I entered the group again and started and it was really exciting and you know Harry Potter. So their first um, challenge is a Quidditch challenge and it's running for the month and it's counting stitches and trying to beat the other houses that they made up. There are four other houses. So. I decided that I was going to use Bird Lady as my Quidditch challenge piece and I had about half of her left to do and so it was approved for doing it and I finished her in three days like I went crazy um, so yeah here she is she's wrinkled because I had her folded up so here is the good Huswives bird keeper um, I stitched her in mostly DMC. I used the DMC conversion, which I would not recommend. So she's charted in silks, in uh, NPS silks or NPI silks. And I think that the DMC conversion is not that great. I mean, it's, it's okay. I don't hate this. But I think that if you looked at the cover or made up your own choices, that would be better. Especially with these leaves or with these flowers. Um, these flowers are actually a variegated, charted for a variegated silk, but obviously DMC is not variegated and it did not look right. So I will put the details on my blog because I didn't bring it, but I, um, I think I used gold leaf and autumn leaves. Gold leaf from the Gentle Art and autumn leaves and those pinker ones from Weeks, I think, but I'll put it in my blog. Uh, but she was finished. So when I started her for Stitch What's, I had um, not finished her skirt. There were no birds and I had not done this tree. No, I had not done this tree. So I finished her up in three days and I'm so thrilled. I don't know what I'm gonna do with her. I'll think of something. Uh, she stitched uh, 36 count vintage country mocha from Witch Elt, one over two with the DMC and the other threads that I talked about, and she is on the right side of the fabric. <laughs> so I was super geeked about that. I've not decided what I'm doing with the chart yet. 
I really, for some reason, just don't want to get rid of it. We'll see. I do know a couple people that would be interested in stitching it as well. So who knows? But right now, it must be over in my pile of stuff. So finish. That was a finish. Then I decided to pick up this. This is what I got from my coffee countdown box from Stitchy Box. And uh, Diana, it is Kismet Stitches, and I started this at StitchCon together. And I'm pretty sure she already finished hers. I don't recall, but I decided I wanted to finish mine. I had it going. Um, I had started it by stitching in hand at StitchCon, and that was a bad idea. And I think that was a bad idea because I thought this was a 32 count fabric, but it's not. It's 36, and I was stitching it with two strands, which I do, I personally do not do on 36 count often, like barely ever, like on one project I have. So it was bulky and I hated it and I wasn't even sure I was going to finish it and I thought, well, I'm just going to put it in a Q-snap and do it. So I did. I finished it. This is that little pillow I used. I'll have to put it all on my blog because I don't know. I used a brown and this uh, I think was roasted marshmallow and this like cuff is color and cotton Roanoke. I know that. And then do you see the beads? Ah, oh, it's my favorite bar. Ah, oh, look at those. Those were some seed beads from my coffee stitchy box. I'll put all the information on my blog. Um, love. So excited. Can't wait to finish this into a little pillow. I finished this for a Stitch What's, I think they're potions class because it's food and drink related. Um, so I finished this for that and I need to FFO it to get extra points. Pretty excited. So I actually pulled out that stitchy box that I still have all the stuff in the box. I'm, I'm looking over here looking at it to see if I wanted to use the buttons um, or there wasn't really any lace in there. I might coffee dye some lace and use the buttons or there were a couple dangly bits that I could use. I just haven't decided. I haven't decided. That was a finish. And then... This is really bothering me. I decided to pick up, I had to pick a project for week two of our Quidditch tournament and I decided to just pick up something totally random and I might have entered this in to one of the classes as well but I don't remember. This was another Mania start for 2016 I think. Um, Hinzite, You Are My Sunshine. This is still available on 123 Stitch, so you can find it there if you're interested. Uh, I just looked it up. Um, the charting is kind of crappy, so all of their symbols aren't symbols, they're letters, and that just irritates me for some reason. <laughs> and I can't really show you, but if you, if, here, like, if you look here at the top, there are no numbers. You can't really see it because it's really blown out. But there are, there you go. There are no numbers. I wrote those numbers in. So you have to count all of your stitches across to figure out where you are. And if you look at the bottom and the top where they marked the middle on the bottom and the top, they are separate stitches. Like they're a stitch apart. So their charting is kind of crappy, but it gets the job done. So when I started this, I had some of the white in the border done and I had You Are My Sons. And I've been working on this for a few days now. And this is where I'm at. So I finished that top block and brought down a lot of the border. And stitched this umbrella outline so now all that needs is fill in and then I started the outline over here and I need to do white in that border 
Uh, this is being stitched on a 32 count linen. I think this is an XJU uh, linen, but I don't know. And I'll try to put that in my blog as well because I don't remember. And I'm going to work on this for the rest of the week. So probably until next Tuesday, I think. Which is coming off. It's only a couple days away. And then I'll put it away. Or maybe I'll keep working on it for Quidditch until it's done. I haven't decided. We'll see how I'm doing on it. My real hope was since nobody was here yesterday, I was going to get this block done. And I didn't stitch at all. I didn't stitch at all yesterday. So I'm kind of disappointed. I really missed a <laughs> missed stitching opportunity right there. But that's that. So those are all the things that I worked on. It was a lot, right? Not bad for a couple weeks. I'll have to throw that back in my Q-snap. And as soon as I'm done here, I get to working. I have purchased some things, not many, because I'm starting to get really overwhelmed with my stash. I say starting, I say that every time. But I did get some, um, I got some gifts. So let's talk about those. And then I bought some stuff. Hold on, please. Hopefully, this is it. There's a lot happening in here. Why do I have a skein of floss in here? What is this? Okay. Here we go. So I participated in a birthday swap. It wasn't a birthday swap. It was a Christmas in July swap. Um, uh, Tracy P set it up and it was a lot of fun. And so I'm gonna show you the stuff that I got in my swap. I think it's all of it, I'm not for sure. But we had like a list of items that had to fit a theme. So I, will kind of go in order. So my partner was um, Eden. That's right, Eden. I, I could just remember your Instagram and I couldn't remember your name when I was trying to think of it this morning. So Eden from um, Eden's Stitchy Corner on YouTube and she's Stitchy Student on Instagram and I will put all that in my blog so you can go um, find her because she's super sweet. I like her. So one of the things was um, something from your wish list. So she got me Autumn Quakers by Rosewood Manor. Um, I want all of these. I have started Spring Quakers. I had to go through my whips to figure it out. So she got me this and she went crazy and got me the Valdani. I'm very excited about that. Uh, one of the things was something you made and she made me this beeswax thread conditioner so when I first saw this I had a cold so I couldn't smell anything you really can't smell it I thought this was like a wax melt so I kept saying I opened up live in uh, the group that we're in and I was like oh I can't wait to put this in my wax melt and then all of a sudden people kept saying no it's thread conditioner it's beeswax thread conditioner and I was like oh glad I didn't just throw that up in the Scentsy you can see it right there yeah so she made that from her own bees I think that's really cool and then there was something Christmas related, which I took out of here. Oh, I think, was it an ornament? I probably already put it with my Christmas stuff. I don't have it anymore. Sorry. Hmm. Um, there was uh, tools like that you can't live without. And she bought me a tacky bob, which I used for the first time ever. Uh, with that coffee piece. It was amazing. So thanks Eden, because I already put this to use. And a snag nabbit. Um, I have one of these right now in my needle book, but you can never have too many. So if you don't have a snag nabbit, you need one. Just so you know. And then something 
I really wish I could figure out what that Christmas item was. <laughs> I must have already taken care of it or I hung it up somewhere around the house. Anyway, um, something funny in a frame. So she said that she couldn't think of anything funny in a frame, but she did frame a Coke cake recipe. So I have talked about Coca-Cola cake before. I'm assuming that's where she got it. Either that or she's just in my head. Um, Coca-Cola cake is one of my favorites and she wrote the recipe for me. So I'm very excited. And I just get this kick-ass frame, which is really heavy and could probably be used as a murder weapon. Just saying. I have no idea what I'll put in it, but I love it. So thank you, Eden. I also purchased some charts, because of course I did. So I had to buy, when I had to buy those petite treasure braids, I was looking on my wish list of what things can I purchase? And because I can't just buy three cards of petite treasure braid, that's silly. I can add a couple things to justify the ship, shipping, right? Excuse me. So I have been wanting these stitching fairies for a couple years. So I finally bought one. I have the hiccups now. Uh, so this is the Needle Fairy, and I purchased the beads and the Krynik to go with her. I'm not taking them out, though. I'm pretty sure those are it. It's definitely the Krynik and the clear beads. So I started, yeah, so I got these. I got these along with the Treasure Braid. And then later, I was like, you know what? You know how I am with a series. I know that there are others of you out there. Don't try to deny it. That when something comes in a series, you want the whole series because it just fulfills a need for order, right? So I did end up getting the Thimble Fairy. I didn't get any of the stuff for her, but I bought the charts. The Thimble Fairy, the Bead Fairy, the Linen Fairy. Oh, and I got the letters by Nora, the, the letter T. Just because I think this is so pretty and someday I keep thinking I'm gonna make this. So if you notice, this is number three, right? I did them out of order. Thimble Fairy is number four. Bead Fairy is number five. Linen Fairy is number six. So where are one and two, you ask? I looked online and I think one and two were released as kits only. I can get the kits from one of my distributors. Well, it's Hoffman because these were made for Hoffman. Um, but they come in kits and they come with the linen and all of the like beads and um, which is fine, except for I don't know that I wanna use all that. And the kits are expensive. You know, even for me getting a retailer discount, they're still really expensive. And so now I'm stuck. Do I really want to finish the series and get all the stuff or not? And I don't even, here's the crazy thing. I don't even like them that much. It's the pincushion fairy and something else. And I don't remember what. They aren't even as pretty as these. <laughs> So I need to tell myself, like, shut up, Trisha, you don't need those. Just because they're part of a series doesn't mean you have to get them, especially if you don't like them. Like, if you don't like them as much as the other ones, why would you purchase them? That's stupid. God. So there's that. Um, I also purchased... I purchased these, I purchased several for the shop, but then I ended up keeping one. This is Hope Blooms by Sam Sarah, and this design uses all of the new colors in the DMC line that were released last year. This you can find on my Etsy shop. And side note, in my Etsy shop, um, 
I have a discount code. And I think it's spooky 2018. I'll put it below real fast and it's through, I don't know how long, I don't remember now, but it's 20% off. I have the new um, Halloween just cross stitch too. So I'll put that information somewhere where you can find it easily and go purchase the just cross stitch Halloween issue and this because you need it. It's so cute. So I have that. I was totally enabled by the Stitching and Doodad duo for this. I don't remember if they showed it. I think they showed it on, they did, on their most recent video. And I had to get it. And somebody else has this too. Somebody else just bought it and I don't remember who now. But I love it. So much it's gonna look so much better than this cover sheet too oh it's just so many colors um uh oh I bought this from kitten stitcher Teresa so I just when this was released it sold out super duper quick and I thought okay I need to go back and see if I can get that and I think she was taking a waiting list or people were emailing her and she was taking a list and as she got more kits because it's a kit with fabric and silk and a needle and as she was putting the kits together they were getting sent out so I went somebody had posted about this again I don't remember who and I was like, oh yeah, I really want that. I remember that. I'd kind of forgotten. So I went out to her website and she had one listed that said up for grabs. And I thought, and then below there were some of this that said, don't purchase unless you're on my list. And I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. So I purchased the up for grabs one because it said up for grabs, which tells me that it was up for grabs. And then, so I purchased it, used my PayPal, bought it, and then I sent her a message and I was like, hey, I don't know if that's really what you meant, but it said up for grabs and I've been wanting it for a while and I just happened to remember again today and there it was, so I purchased it. Ah. And she said that was fine and so she sent it out in a couple days and here it is. So it's the kit with red floss and 32 count linen, Flax Belfast. And... Um, it comes with a needle and she also sent one of these guys which I have hanging above my stitchy chair so you can't see it and she sent some candy along too and I don't know if Teresa watches my videos but I'm gonna say it anyway I tried to eat the candy and I couldn't <laughs> they were weird they're all, I don't remember what they're called like strawberries and blackberries or something and it was, the flavor was amazing, but the texture was too much for me. And then I tried to pawn them off on my husband who loves candy and will eat anything. And he was like, these are weird. Like we just couldn't get over the texture. So no more candy for me from Kitten Stitcher, but that's okay. Cause I really just wanted this pattern. So I'm very excited. I hope to start it maybe sometime soon. Um, the Good Huswife on Etsy released a couple new patterns that I just got. Elizabeth East Eaton. Easton. No, it is Easton. I'm trying to reading it backwards. I hope I don't have this one already. I kind of checked my list. I really, really need to organize my charts because I'm starting to double buy stuff and that's bad. So this is on her Etsy shop and also our house which my God, I, now that I'm looking at this, I really feel like I have an original print of this. But whatever, it doesn't matter, I still bought it. Now I have two. Oh, heck. Yep, so excited to have those to stitch never. I also picked up, so the, this Lizzie Kate, the last time I tried to buy it, it was out of print, or out of stock. So I could pick this up again from I don't know where and then I saw these um, sheepish, the sheepish needlebook from Nikki's, Nikki's Creations, right? Yeah, primitives. I don't know why I love that so much, but I need to get some of this gingham fabric now. Oh, I have two of them. <laughs> Obviously, why do I have two of them in my stuff? 
I must have meant to post one of these on my Etsy shop. So if you want this, it'll be posted in my Etsy shop pretty soon. I'm so crazy. I'm so crazy. And is anybody else stitching the home for the holidays? Tis the season. Are you, did you join the tis the season floss tube group? Cause you should on Facebook. We are starting this Labor Day weekend. It is from this Blackbird Designs Home for the Holidays um, book. And tis the season. Let's see if there's a better picture. It's the last, here we go. It's the last chart in the book. This is what it looks like. Isn't it gorgeous? It's got, I think, three languages. Maybe it's two languages. It's two, French and English um, charted for Tis the Season to be Jolly. So I am starting that Labor Day weekend. I purchased the floss from Nancy, a Victorian model sampler shop. She uh, dyed floss for this stitch along to get them all together. I don't remember how much they were, but you can email her or join the Facebook group, which is Floss Tube. Tis the season, stitch along 2018, something like that. I'll put it below, you know I will, or in my blog. I'll put it in my blog. I just, no, that was it. So this, oh my God, these flosses. I have not stitched with any of these flosses, but they are really fun to pet. So these are the colors, and this is the fabric that I am using, which is a 32 count linen from Ships Manor, and it's called Silvery Moon. So it's a blue gray um, modeled, oh, I love it. And I think it's gonna look so good. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I picked my fabric on that. And I am actually using this, chart for a Stitch What's class as well. I think it's Care of Magical Creatures because it's got an animal in it. That's it. That's all I've got to show. It's good just hanging out with you. Uh, school will be starting soon, so I'm really excited about that. My uh, two older sons, um, AJ and Axel, start school on the 22nd. Archer just graduated out of his preschool program. He was in a clinical program uh, for autistic kids, which combined ABA therapy and preschool, and they decided to graduate him out, which I'm really salty about because he still has one year before he can go to kindergarten. He's only four. And uh, they just said that he had mastered everything that he needed to master there. So. Um, when I found that out, there was a lot of chaos trying to find something else for him to do, another preschool program, and find um, an ABA therapist for him because he was losing both school and therapy. But we managed to get it together. He starts school again after Labor Day in a full day preschool program, and I found um, an ABA provider for him that I'm super stoked about who will be doing therapy in the classroom with him. So, and it's in the same building that he was in last year. So we've got about a month break with Archer at home, um, but the other kids start up and I'm really hoping that I can get into more of a groove. I know everybody says that. I'm hoping to get into a groove once school starts. So we'll see. We will see. I don't imagine that I'm gonna be back. Uh, really soon but you never know because Archer's really good about me recording he doesn't mind so that's that maybe I'll just get lots of stitching done I don't know I don't know what I do know is I need more coffee because it's cold so we're done here thanks for watching I hope to um, see you again soon stay stitchy and I'll see you in the next video Bye.